to begin this experiment, I'm filling this regulation football in our bathroom uh, with the shower on to simulate a locker room environment. Hopefully that gives us a reasonable approximation of what the balls might have been filled with. Now that the uh, ball has been inflated to 12.5 PSI, we're ready to start. All right, so we got all of our necessary testing equipment, got our gauge, got our football, got our handy assistant, Master Sattler. Sattler is a scientist, although really more of a writer artist at heart, but uh, we're still going to employ his assistance in this experiment. Chris, do you think that the experiment will show that the ball drops two pounds per square inch or more, or do you think that it will come in under two pounds per square inch? Being a scientist, I will objectively observe exactly what happens and I will have no opinion to sway it either way. Nonsense. What is your opinion? <laughs> I honestly don't know. You don't have a guess? I, uh, just, just gander a guess. I think that the temperature will cause the pressure to drop more than 2 PSI. Do you? Yes. Temperature alone? Y yes. <laughs> you, you feel under the gun, don't you? <laughs> yes. Oh, you poor guy. All right. All right. Well, I think... There's a chance that we'll show that the pressure drops uh, two pounds per square inch uh, or more. Um, and I think that uh, the only way to know for sure is to test it. You can do math all day long and come up with theories, but uh, science is about testing. It's about taking your math and seeing if it's real or not. And so that's what we're about to do here. All right, so what we're doing is we're heading down to my cabin, uh, which is south of town. The reason we're going there is because the temperature uh, it's pretty close right now to the temperature um, that should have been present at the football game in question. Uh, we need to also simulate the wetness that was present and the wind chill. Those are factors that I don't think uh, have been adequately accounted for uh, so far in the media. So putting in that all together uh, should be an interesting experiment and we'll see some real world data as to uh, how much of a pressure change there is in this ball. What we're testing is the effect of temperature, the ambient temperature, but then also uh, the effect of wind and evaporative cooling and seeing if those three factors uh, can drop that ball by 2 PSI and account for the uh, findings of the uh, NFL game. There's other factors that I'm thinking might be relevant, hard to know. Um, one of the things that you need to consider when you're uh, doing the pressure uh, and temperature calculations is volume. Uh, most people are assuming that the volume of the ball stays the same, and it probably doesn't change much, but it still could be a factor, and I'm thinking that a wet ball with the leather becoming more uh, pliable might uh, stretch out a little bit, and that may drop the uh, pressure a little further. So we'll have to see. So, uh, so what, what is your understanding of the uh, situation currently, Chris? So I'm not... Being an avid football fan I, that you are. I'm not real caught up on this. Uh, so something to do with... Uh, Ball pressure was illegal, making a uh, problem with playing the game. And uh, go ahead and elaborate on that. I don't quite know what's going on there. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> 11 out of 12 uh, footballs were found to be 2 PSI below what is uh, regulation. 12.5 uh, is the uh, regulation uh, pressure. Uh, and they were all but one were. 10.5 PSI and so the question is why and it only happened to the Patriot balls and there's some theoretical advantages to having a underinflated ball particularly uh, extra grippiness but the question is could this have happened simply as a factor of weather and uh, that's what has been postulated most people say no weather weather couldn't have accounted for it it had to be cheating. Uh, that that they were they were uh, flying under the radar. Now the balls were tested at the beginning of the game and all found to be acceptable. So sometime between when they were tested at the beginning of the game and halftime, when they were tested again and eleven were found to be underinflated, something happened. And is the question the question is did somebody tamper with those balls, uh, thereby cheating, or did this happen naturally? Now, the fact that it did not happen to the uh, Colts team would suggest that perhaps it was tampering. Although we don't know 
how were the uh, Colts uh, footballs or the Patriots footballs handled other than tampering? How were they were handled uh, during that time frame? Were they both stored out in the uh, cold weather, exposed to the uh, elements? Um, also, uh, the Colts may have infil filled their uh, balls up to the maximum end of the legal range or the allowed range, uh, which is 13.5 PSI. Um, some people like 13.5 PSI. Aaron Rodgers uh, likes a harder ball. Uh, now, Tom Brady has stated publicly in the past that he likes a, uh, a softer ball. And so that adds to the uh, theory that perhaps it's been tampered with because of his predilection towards softer balls. However, they definitely choose to inflate the ball to the low end of uh, the allowed limit. And if you do that at room temperature and test it at room temperature, you're gonna expect it to fall under the allowed limit uh, during a game uh, environment. So do you think by adding water and wind that we're going to cool that ball further and get the two pound per square inch drop? That's the question. And, I, and I'm not sure, I'm, I'm kind of on the, uh, it's probably going to be close, but I don't, I don't know that it's going to get there. Well, what do you think? I think it can be done. I, I think we're going to give it a good shot, and I think we're, we're I think we're going to see a drop. All right, that should be good. All right, we are right in the sweet spot. Uh, oh shoot, I forgot the. Uh, the pillowcase. Be right back. Oh, I have a pillowcase right here. Well, I did not forget the pillowcase. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that again? Oh, well, <laughs> I was explaining that uh, fudging the conditions of the experiment, sometimes that's just what you gotta do. Fudging the data, that's cheating. Fudging the uh, conditions of the experience, well, that's, that's just the process of science. I hate to do this, this fine football, but it's for science. The pillowcase is already starting to dry out. We may have to keep this uh, wetted down with some kind of uh, spray or something. All right. This is inefficient. <laughs> yeah. Got no idea. Oh, look at that. That looks like a plus three day at a football game. That's what that looks like. Dr. Skinner, those conditions look ideal. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I like this. This is good. Temperature is right on. Ooh, wind speed is right on. We've got it all right now. So I was saying earlier that, uh, that fudging the conditions isn't cheating. It's not cheating if you admit to the conditions you had to fudge. If you said, oh, you did it exactly the way that it happened in the real world, and you didn't, then that's cheating. But if you say, you know what, we did our best, well, you know, that's what it is. It is what it is. You can cheat your data, and you cheat. Like, if I fudge it so that the pressure I measure is lower than it really is, that's just plain out cheating, and I don't think anybody would argue with that. Um, probably don't need to put that much water on it. I need to figure out how to remove floor water. What I do, I'm gonna turn this around. And the reason I'm gonna turn this around is because we're gonna have wind coming across, wet surfaces, cooling the air, and then hitting the ball in the sack, further cooling things. I think this is more realistic if we can get the wet to the front.
There we go. In some places in the country, they actually use evaporative cooling as uh, air conditioning. been about an hour in the uh, test conditions. Let's see what the uh, pressure of the ball is. Oh, interesting. The ball was not uh, wet on the entire, all the services, but uh, we'll see if that matters. You ready? Ready. We are at 11 PSI. So we dropped it one and a half with the test conditions. I'd say a fairly good estimate. However, we do have a dry spot. Perhaps uh, we should uh, continue on and get that dry spot wet and see what, if that makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, that spot was really dry. I wonder if that was the spot that was towards the fan or away from the fan. Looked like the entire pillowcase was wet. Yeah, but not all in contact with the ball. And we weren't constantly soaking it with water. So now I've got it pretty well contacting all the ball surface. Boy, this is cold. We should uh, check the temperature on it. Uh, let me get started here again. We'll only do this for uh, maybe 20 minutes and see what we get there. Maybe, just maybe. It'll drop the full two. All right, let's see what temperature it is before we start the fan up. Well, it's reading at 48 degrees, so uh, pretty much ambient temperature, um, at least right now without the uh, air on. We'll turn the air on and see if that changes. So with, with the wind blowing on it, now it's reading uh, quite a bit cooler. You can see we've only had the uh, wind or the uh, fan blowing for a few seconds and it's already dropped from 48 down to 46. Now down to 42. Clearly wind and moisture is a big factor here. All right, we gave it another 20 minutes. Uh, this time we hopefully got the entire ball wet. Uh, and we'll see if that dropped our uh, pressure any further. Let's also see what the temperature of this ball is now. That has had uh, time to uh, chill further. See a lot of the, uh, the pigment is coming out of the pig skin here. Yeah, it's mostly saturated now. I still see some Spots where it's a little bit light, like there, but mostly saturated. And quickly, it's uh, 44 degrees, so colder than the uh, room temperature is currently. And now for the pressure. And we are right about 11 PSI, almost 10.5. I mean, uh, it's a little bit lower than 11. I shouldn't say it's almost 10.5, but uh, we're close, we're close. I would consider that close. I'd say to another quarter within uh, 10.5. So wouldn't take much to uh, put you at the two uh, pound mark. Um, obviously there may be other factors that we're not accounting for, and I guess the uh, other thing we could test right now would be the Gronkowski spike. I don't think either Chris or I are uh, going to be able to match a Gronkowski spike. And honestly, it sounds pretty ridiculous. But we're going to do our best. <laughs> Initiating Gronkowski spike. Uh, wait, I don't have my cup on. Should I be moving to safety here? Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stand back. All right, uh, and protecting camera. And I really don't know how Gronkowski does a spike. <laughs> so we're just going to spike it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Apparently the ceiling is a risk too. All right, one more. All right. 
probably not a Gronkowski, but let's see if it did anything. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're still about uh, 10 and 3 quarters. So the spike is not a legitimate air deflator? Not my spike. Let me try a double spike. You ready? Double spike. Double spike. And then one more for good measure. Sure. Here we go. And then we'll have a Sattler spike. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> Didn't budge. All right. No effect from the spike. All right. All right. I think. Okay. All right. <laughs> Celebration spike. Okay. So, you got to dance. Well, I just trying to get in the mindset. So I just did something amazing in. in oh yeah. In the football game, right? So I. This is your hell yeah right now. Just scored a goal. Touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it, so, is it a? Do you like to have the point first into the spike? Or I think is it that's more about, about well, yeah. Center of I've been doing spike. point, point because hence the name spike. However, maybe maybe he has a flat. You you're a, a flat spike just to vary things up. Yeah. Being scientific and all. Here we go. Make sure that the vital areas are covered in case it goes in a weird direction. Vital areas are covered. Nice. One more, One and then more. We'll... Okay, we, we did the flat, now we'll do the spikes. This one's gonna be a little more erratic, probably. Celebration, I'm happy. Didn't play a lot. Nice. Oh, that felt really good. All right, I'll give you the honor. Okay. You can see a little of the pigskin color coming off. Prepare to test. Testing. We are at uh, removing test. Oh, it goes down when that happens. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is. It, it went up. I spiked air into the ball. Success. I think, it's, <laughs> I think the ball is warming up. Oh, okay. That's that would be my guess. Is that the ball is warming up? And that you didn't successfully spike air to the ball, although that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, shoot. I guess this is busted. We didn't. Uh, we didn't drop it by two, and we 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 did try our darndest to uh, simulate the conditions. If anything, we exceeded them because it, we weren't like super humid here, and uh, we should have had really good air cooling. Dropped it one and a half, which is more than what uh, other people. Uh, would suggest with just a air temperature to uh, outdoor temperature change. Uh, so, in science, we must learn to accept our failures as well as our successes mm. with dignity and grace. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel. Oh well. Can I get a last shot of you as uh -huh. we, we shut down? <laughs> Excellent work, Dr. Skinner. You are you. a scientist. <laughs> and